Welcome to our next Pivot Talk interview. Today, together with Andy, I have a pleasure to host Stephen Law, the CTO of Jayacom. Hi, Steve. I'm happy that you found some time to join us here. Hi, Paulina and, uh, and Andy, and uh, thanks for having me. Steve, so your, your CTO uh, at Jayacom, all we hear is great news, very positive news, uh, fastest growing company in the north, one of the fastest growing UK companies. I think last week you announced you were sponsoring Hull City Football Club. Um, so you are a um, distributor of Microsoft Cloud tools for small, medium businesses, mainly within the UK, uh, through your cloud marketplace. Um, this makes it incredibly easy for your IT provider customers to support the software for more than 65,000 UK businesses. So, Steve, congratulations. Jacob <laughs> has a really huge growth in recent years. Uh, your story features a significant company pivot, right? Can you share any numbers and the story of, of your success? Uh, yeah, happy to. So, um, uh, we, we've uh, been very lucky. We've had a very exciting period of growth for Geocom over the last uh, five years, uh, which as you say, has been driven by uh, a, a pivot. Uh, so Geocom's main business from uh, 2010 through to 2015 was provided, um, providing hosted uh, email and email security services, um, uh, which allowed us to build up a really loyal base of IT providers uh, and build a successful business. Um, uh, but in 2015, we saw that Microsoft was really starting to get some traction with Office 365. Um, and uh, our concern was that, uh, to use a terrible phrase, that they would end up eating our lunch. So effectively our service would become irrelevant. Everybody would use Office 365 and wouldn't, wouldn't be interested in our service. So we, we went and had a conversation with, uh, with Microsoft who at the time had a, a number of uh, global partners. So uh, three, I think at the time, or possibly only two, uh, all multi-billion dollar businesses that uh, they worked with uh, and somehow we managed to persuade them to uh, uh, add us to their partner list uh, on this new program that they introduced called CSP uh, and we were offered the opportunity to become a tier one, tier one partner which is essentially a distributor which is uh, as Andy said before what, ultimately what we do we provide software to uh, IT providers who then provide it onto their customers. Um, and that uh, has really uh, just uh, kind of revolutionized our business. So, and that's all driven on the back of um, uh, us providing uh, not only the Microsoft products like Office 365 and Azure, uh, but also a sort of growing portfolio of other products from uh, companies like Acronis, Made, um, uh, 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 to, to support our IT provider customers. So, yeah, it's been really interesting great growth and as you say on on the back of an interesting uh, pivot impressive yeah really impressive so so steve two years ago you were carefully brought into geocom by your your ceo chairman and investors living bridge what's what were they looking um to change and achieve by bringing you into geocom um, so I'd say I think fundamentally what they were looking for was to, to bring in some uh, technology leadership um, and, to, uh, uh, and to address a number of kind of challenges, if you like, as the business continued to very quickly scale. Um, uh, so building out um, uh, the, the technology teams um, and sort of trying to professionalize our sort of processes and practices, in particular in the kind of software engineering and infrastructure teams. Um, uh, and I guess finally also spearheading our move to the to the cloud. Uh, so um, uh, my a big part of my focus over that uh, over the last two years has been building out that kind of uh, world class team. Uh, I was very lucky uh, that uh, actually we had some great people there already when I joined, but um, obviously we're growing very quickly, and it's it's important to continue to kind of develop and grow the team. Um, and uh, we, we've um, managed to uh, to bring in some really high quality people. Um, so I've, I've got a, a great team today um, uh, that's got some really good skills. And, and interestingly, we've we've brought that team in from far and wide, including uh, a, a number of people that I've uh, brought over from India. 
uh, that I've worked with in, in previous roles. So um, got a really good team uh, uh, that uh, deliver a great service these days uh, to our customers and built some important um, uh, sort of foundations uh, in terms of architecture and other things, uh, uh, a lot of which these days is on Azure. So we use many of the tools that we sell. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I think uh, hopefully achieved uh, certainly the sort of starting point of the things that uh, they wanted when, uh, when, when I was brought on. Steve, I know that you have a fascinating background. Uh, you've held some very senior executive positions. Can you tell us more about your career? Yeah, so I guess I've had a long brackets. I'm quite old uh, and uh, and varied career, um, including uh, a, a, a quite a number of different uh, sort of technology leadership roles in a whole mixture of different companies, startups, high growth technology companies. I've done a bit of Silicon Valley uh, over the years. Um, uh, and uh, I guess the more interesting one, certainly uh, uh, my kids always think the more interesting stuff is uh, I spent some time in the games industry. So uh, I used to write uh, back in the 80s, just to show how really old I am. I used to write 8-bit uh, games for Sinclair Spectrum, Commodore 64, etc. Um, and uh, used to personally write them as well as run a little business in that space. Uh, and I've also done a stint in the uh, games industry more recently where I was uh, running teams building Xbox, PlayStation and GameCube games. So, uh, so I've definitely done some fun things. The, uh, I, I guess the more, more recently, before I joined Geocom, I spent 10 years with uh, Capita um, uh, running um, uh, uh, basically in kind of product and, and technology leadership roles. Um, uh, running big parts of a number of their kind of vertical market software businesses in sectors sort of uh, like education, local government, etc. Um, uh, and during that time, spent a lot of time building some very large scale and very successful SaaS uh, products um, and using a lot of Azure actually during that time as well, which was good. Thank you. Steve, so we, we came together uh, last year when you were looking to select a partner. Uh, to work with your teams to drive Geocom's success to the next level. You've got loads of nearshore, offshore, on-site software delivery experience. Um, could you tell us a bit about, you know, what attracted you to, to PGS? Uh, yeah, no problem at all. So I guess just, just to kind of put that experience into context, so obviously I've been running development teams for, uh, well, certainly 20 plus years, um, uh, both uh, sort of multi-site and, uh, and um, uh, multi-country development teams. Um, I guess the best example of my kind of experience on the near and offshore front is um, whilst I was at Capita, I built an, an Indian offshore development center uh, for their software businesses. So started from ground up from employee number one. Uh, and I think when I left, probably had about 500 um, staff that we'd recruited into that development center and we were centralizing all of our software development into that um, and um, I think that's now got well over a thousand staff in that sort of center so um, uh, that um, uh, obviously gave me a lot of experience of, of dealing with many of the challenges that are associated with kind of um, uh, remote development and uh, getting teams uh, and businesses to work over over you know sort of geographically dispersed teams um and so um when i when i joined uh, geocom it was it was clear fairly early on that we needed to significantly increase our um our capacity we had a go at doing that locally in hull uh, and to be honest hull hull is not silicon valley uh, not yet obviously we're trying to slowly turn it into silicon valley uh, but uh, but we still got a few years to go so uh, it, it, it became clear that we needed to sort of augment our capacity outside of uh, that that we could do um, locally in Hull um, and so um, looked at a number of different options and decided that a near shore partner would make the most sense for us um, something that uh, you know somewhere where, where we could travel to and to and back potentially in a kind of 24-hour window uh, and where we'd have a sort of closer time zone uh, uh, a match. So we we selected a number of, or we talked to an, a long list of partners. I think we probably uh, had conversations with maybe 15 different uh, partners, uh, shortlisted that down to three. 
uh, and, uh, and, and and booked a week out to come and do a trip around Europe. Interestingly, I'd I'd just managed to recruit myself a head of development, uh, and his first week on the job was with me in Europe. So uh, that was a fun experience for him. Uh, so uh, he, uh, he he got to learn learn about me very quickly <laughs> in in an intense way. So, uh, but we we had a great great trip around uh, Europe, and we we uh, we came to see the three partners that we'd selected, of which uh, you, you guys are one. And interestingly, uh, PGS being very open was not our was not our favourite before we came. Or and, and by that, I guess I just mean that we um, was not the one that we expected would come out best to our kind of evaluation. Um, uh, but uh, to be very honest, we we were kind of blown away from the minute that we walked in the door at the offices, uh, uh, at your offices. Um, we really liked the kind of setup, um, but most importantly, we really liked the people. I think the you know for me, building uh, great software requires uh, you know great people. It's you know, like everything in life; you can't uh, uh, you know you can't get the job done without having the best best people available and. Um, Building, you know, building software engineering these days and building complex software is, um, uh, you know, is a hard job, requires really, really smart people and it requires people that enjoy what they do, are focused on what they do and, and are, you know, um, you know, really want to do it. Uh, and all of the engagements we had with everybody at PGS uh, right from day one, uh, that's what Sean do. He just had a really great set of people that just love software engineering. Um, which is, you know, obviously what, what you know, what, what we needed. So it, would, it frankly, it became a very easy choice in the end. Um, and our experience over the uh, over the last uh, sort of nine, nine, ten months has, has matched uh, what we saw when we first came over. So uh, yeah, we're really pleased with the choice. And we are really, it's really great to hear uh, your opinion. Uh, Jayacom uh, is probably very well placed to feel how SMBs uh, have reacted to COVID and how they are now using cloud tools to continue working. Mm, can we ask what you have seen already and how you think it will evolve in the near future? Yeah, certainly. So we, um, uh, uh, well, as Andrew said right at the beginning, so we, we um, have um, more than 60,000 companies in the UK that ultimately through our partners are um, uh, we are, are, are being serviced. So we have we kind of pretty good exposure to what's happening in the market. Um, and it's, it's utterly fascinating. I mean, you know, what we saw, which is, I think what everybody's experienced is just a kind of complete overnight move um, to um, remote working, um, which, you know, included ourselves, all of our partners and all of their customers. Um, as something that, you know, completely unprecedented. I don't think anybody... Um, ever thought that that would be possible. Many of those companies thought they would never be able to support home working. Really interestingly, including ourselves, I think, well, not, not I don't think we thought we'd never support it, but we'd, we'd um, built a business and even our office and everything to really support um, teams, you know, working together, working closely, working in the office. We put, uh, we've invested, you know, significantly over the last few years in really building a great capability and because we're a kind of small local business having everybody in one office you know we felt like it was a real advantage um but um and, and many of our you know our customers are, are, were in the same position overnight all of us transitioned to working from home um and, and for me it's um you know been a massive success um really uh you know in a really positive uh, really positive way totally uh, enabled by a technology I think the you know I've you know as I alluded to before a lot of experience of working with remote teams over a very long period of time, and you know even if I went back five years working with teams in India, frankly was extremely uh, you know challenging in terms of the quality of um, you, you know this kind of video um, uh, uh, quality would just wasn't there at all. We used to use Skype. Uh, we largely used it for voice. It was pretty horrible. Um, uh, and when I used to go and spend a few weeks in India uh, every few months and sit on the end of the uh, the kind of scrum calls and other things like that. It was awful. Um, and so, you know, that I think that uh, products like Teams, uh, Microsoft Teams, which we sell, as well as Zoom and other products, have, have just completely changed the uh, the experience. And it's now extremely possible to uh, to work from home in a, in a, in a pretty seamless way. 
uh, I, I, you know, I spend a very large proportion of my time these days sitting in front of teams and, uh, and, and working with and talking to my team. Uh, and it's, there are still some things that, you know, don't work as well remotely. I think brainstorming, whiteboarding, that type of stuff is just not quite the same experience. But for the most part, I think the, the tools and the technology supports it extremely well. Uh, and you know, as I said, I think it's, it's you know, a huge number of customers of, of ours and their customers have moved now to, to remote working who never previously considered it. And I, and, and I believe it's now a permanent change that just, you know, an irreversible change. I think, you know, lots of companies will continue to have offices and, and some people will work in those, but I think a significant number of companies um, uh, uh, remote working will be a big part of um, uh, you know of their future, uh, 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 and I think it's uh, it, it's really interesting. It provides some very obvious benefits for the companies, but also for the employees. I mean, you know, for the companies, you get cost reduction in terms of requiring less office space, um, access to a bigger talent pool. Um, so you know, for example, my comment about you know uh, trying to build a team in Hull earlier, you know, we you know today we wouldn't think in such a constrained way we'd happily build a development team from people anywhere in the uk and bring them together um so um and for the employees or staff i think you know you don't have to travel to work which means you save time and money better work-life balance again lots of lots of sort of positive benefits so yeah i think it's i think it's changed things enormously i think um will enable a whole bunch of new types of businesses as well so really exciting be interesting to see how it plan, pans out over the next 12 months, won't it? I mean, exactly. Steve, when, when we started working together, um, you set out a clear strategy and plan to enable Geocom to really kind of push and accelerate the company growth on a, on a global scale. Have you, have you needed to adjust this since COVID? Um, to be honest, we've been we've we've really been very fortunate. Um, so the kind of impact uh, on our business of COVID has been um, uh, relatively small. We've not had to kind of furlough any staff or do anything like that. Ultimately, much of what we do is selling the tools that support um, being able to remotely work, uh, both in terms of things like Microsoft Teams, but also all of the other sort of cloud solutions and security solutions that we provide all. Um, support uh, that remote working and, and help provide the tools that our customers and their customers need to be able to to, to work from home so um, uh, obviously like most companies we you know we had a, um, a, a slowing down of our business you know the, 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 a lot of our customers customers you know did have to um, uh, furlough staff or slow their business down for a period of time if they're in the hospitality or travel industries etc but um, Fundamentally, um, uh, we, we've, it's really not been a, a significant impact and, and, you know, we're not quite back to business as usual, but we're probably somewhere close to business being, at a, you know, not a, not a million miles off the same level as it was prior to COVID. So it's not really changed our plans significantly. And at the moment, we're starting to look at uh, accelerating some of those growth plans uh, on, on the back of our continued success. So uh, overall, I think we've been very fortunate. Okay, thank you very much. For, <laughs> thank you very much for this fascinating uh, story and this interview. It was a really great pleasure to talk to you. Mm, I keep it's, my it's it's it's, fan it's fantastic to share, you know, partner with you and, and share the Geocom, um, you know, journey. And we just wish you all the very best going forward. You know, re really well done and uh, congratulations so far. Uh, brilliant thank you well and uh, you know thank you to pgs obviously uh, we uh, we rely on your guys to help uh, build out our systems these days and uh, hopefully they will continue to support as well <laughs>